tips that will transform your running experience. Uh, we have here the lovely Natasha, and you also see me in the video. It's getting changed here. Whoa, better fall off the chair. Uh, getting back to it. So we, we're going to have some great tips here. We've got some grand tips. Let's get into it. The first tip would be footwear. Uh, you hear me talking a lot about footwear choices. I do recommend using the max cushion shoes for most of your runs, especially if you're a new runner. Uh, you can see us running here in Ultra Paradigms, uh, not sponsored, sponsored. But I find, I find them a max cushion shoe quite good. There's another good shoe called the Ultra Escalante. I'm a big fan of the Zero Drop shoe. Big fan of the Zero Drop shoe. It just allows a more natural, we'll talk about diet as well in this video. This is going to be the best video you're ever going to see on running. Unless you've seen one of my other videos. Uh, I'm going to talk about diet, best diet for weight loss and energy, best diet for performance, and we're going to talk about the best footwear and best running posture technique and clothing, etc. So let's talk about the shoes first of all. Zero drop, I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of getting some zero drop shoes. Put them in your rotation. Maybe don't do all your miles straight away in them. Ease them into your rotation. Get your Achilles and your calves stronger, more toned, etc. And zero drop shoes will help you do that. We're not designed to wear shoes, um, but we do run on tarmac, so shoes are a smart idea. But we're not designed to run in shoes that have a heel lift. So I'm a big fan of zero drop. And that wide toe box really, really does help. Uh, the foot splay, the foot spread, so you can stretch it out, give it a nice, good stretch on those uh, little tootsies on those feet there. So that's the Ultra Paradigm, Ultra Escalante, Ultra Olympus, my favorite three shoes ever. And I'll do some more review videos on that one. So that's the, that's the footwear done. You can have cushioning, man. You can run in your Vibe and Five Fingers on the grass, that's good for barefoot stuff, but really the barefoot stuff, they're, they're for boating. You know, Vibe and Five Fingers are designed for boats. They're not designed for running fast on tarmac. You know, you can use them if you want, but it'll be at your expense of your performance. And you're most likely going to get an injury. So many of my friends who run the Vibrams, um, unless they're really, really established, experienced runners, they get these chronic stone bruises, etc. So, I mean, if you want to do, if you want to run the Vibram Five Fingers, do it. But you're going to be running a lot, lot slower, and you're never really going to get those aesthetic results you get running at speed. You know, those fast 1K repeats really, really do make a difference. So there you go. Picking some wild mushrooms there. Natasha is a fan of the mushroom. She loves a good mushroom. Uh, Let's talk about posture. Myself, my posture could be improved. If, if, if I'm going to, you could feel feel free to welcome uh, to uh, critique me in the comments as well. How do you think I can improve my running technique? Uh, a lot of people say, Harley, relax your shoulders more. And so yeah, I could, I could definitely relax my shoulders more. I would say here Natasha is probably pointing her chin out a bit too much, and I I tend to do that as well. I tend to do that as well. So you want to have with your chin back, so that the chin sort of picking out a little bit there, and that's pretty common, pretty common thing. So you can see my chin is poking out a bit, a bit about a bit too much. Uh, I've got to bring it back in a bit more, and I find it helps breathing easier. And with my elbows, hands relaxed down low by the sides, heels coming up, almost kicking your bum a bit. And we're running at different speeds here, different paces, so you have a lot different uh, different techniques. But cadence as well, uh, most physiologists would agree, and most sub 205 marathoners would have a cadence of at least 90. So I try and have that high cadence. If you watch my cadence there, if I'm going slow or fast, I try and have the cadence around 90. Mm -hmm and having a little cadence meter can help with that. I have my shoulders, try and have relaxed as possible, and I try and minimize the upper body rotation. Try and minimize the upper body rotation. And uh, there we go there. So Natasha got that really nice running physique there, those long legs. And we all say, do you need long legs to run fast? No, you don't. I mean, it looks cool, but it's not it's essential because the fastest runners we see, they have, they're normally about five foot six. Five foot six. And people say, I've got short legs, I can't run fast. Well. I'll introduce you to a little Italian greyhound called Figsy, and she'll run the fucking legs off all of us. And she, her legs are like, you know, half a foot long. So long legs don't make you a faster runner. What makes you a fast runner is effort and high blood volume and muscle glycogen, which sort of streams us into nutrition. What, what What's the best diet to eat to be a slim, lean, fast, healthy runner? Well, we know that the fastest runners in the world are the Africans. And what diet do they eat? They eat a high carbohydrate, low fat, low protein diet. They live on corn, rice, sugar, bananas. Their consumption of animal products is very, 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 very minimal. And that's what keeps them lean. You know, you go to, I mean, go to Kenya, go to Ethiopia, go to Uganda, go to Rwanda, and go and visit the villages where there's no starvation, where people are just eating their traditional diet based on corn, maize, ugali, teff. You know, these, these sort of grains, these high carbohydrate grains, they process them as well. They're processed, refined grains, and these people are lean. I mean, I've trained with the Kenyans. I've trained with the Ethiopians. You know, I've, I've been to dinner with them. I've hanged out with them. I've even spent time with them. And 
outside of running and they're just carving the fuck up so i recommend a high carbohydrate i recommend vegan i've been vegan 17 years and i find it's a lot easier to maintain race weight see my physique here uh don't do a lot of miles neither does natasha we do maybe yeah, maybe five kilometers a week this year average you know on the bike maybe 50 60 80 100 k's a week on average this year not much not much so you don't need to do a lot but what you need to do is eat right you know and if you're going to do some training then you want to train smarter versus harder we'll get to that but anyway let's keep focusing on the diet uh, so you can see that leanness i'm age 40 uh and if if the nutrition didn't work i wouldn't look like i do you know simple as that and you look at my videos from 10 years ago i look the same still lean still slim still carving the fuck up and it works regardless of your fitness level it works some people say oh you you can only eat a lot of carbohydrates if you do a lot of training it's like well that's not true at all everybody needs to carb the fuck up you know even if you're sitting in the car you need to carb the fuck up so you can pay attention every cell in the human body runs with glucose and i'm not i can't we can't be this lean on this little training if this nutrition plan didn't work you know i mean look at us we're as lean as olympic marathoners olympic runners who do you know 100 100 miles a week running you know and how can we be this lean on, on little training if the nutrition wasn't working so that's what I always ask people and then just go to Kenya not everyone's a fast runner in Kenya but most Kenyans are lean but bring them to Australia you know you, you give me any Kenyan elite runner and I'll put them on the Aussie diet and I'll put on 10 20 kilos in the first few months and their performance will drop you give me any, any lean Asian person and I'll, I'll put them on the Aussie diet meat bacon eggs and we'll blow them up we'll blow them out they'll be tub chub tub tubs you know we'll get the guts on them so that's just how it is you know we can i can blow out anyone i could blow myself out i could blow myself i mean <laughs> i could blow i could blow anyone i mean <laughs> i could blow out anyone's waistline quite easily you know i could do that i could blow your waistline right out i'll just give you lots of meat eggs and dairy and all sorts of stuff like that all right so the high carbohydrate is i mean you've got so many vegan runners out there scott direct Scott Jurek, what's he got, the world 24-hour record and stuff like that? You got Mike Hans. So you got these guys who were not vegans and were good runners. And then they went vegan and got better. So it's just, there's so many people out there who are... Oh, I was a meat-based athlete, all right? I was, a, I was a guy in school wanting to be a better runner and eating meat, thinking you need meat for protein and all that shit. And then when I quit meat or quit all the animal stuff, I became faster and better. And I'm getting older. You know, and most guys my age ain't running this fast. You know, they don't have this lifestyle... Because they ain't eating like me, you know? So the, the, few, the fuel you put in is what you become. You are what you eat. You know, you are what you eat. So if you want the best results, put in the best fuel. Rice, corn, fruit, potatoes, refined sugar. We use a lot of cane sugar, organic sugar. Tastes good. Add it to the smoothies. Helps give that muscle, that glycogen, so you get that pump, you get that pump look. Ask any bodybuilder about the pump. That's muscle glycogen, all right? So if you don't have a muscle glycogen, your muscles look flat. So the more you carb up, the more your muscles get that little bit of a pump. You're juicy. You want juicy tissues out there. So uh, juicy tissue is good. But uh, run in those shirt if you're a narc like me. Give this video a, a thumbs up if you like narcs. Give this video a thumbs down if you don't like narcs. I run like a narc. But anyway, it's good. It, it, it is hilarious. So stretching as well. I would say stretching after run is good just to stretch out your calves a bit. If you do have any pain, do not run please do not run maybe stretch it out and if the pain exists persists then please see your doctor no please stop running jump on the bike and go run it ride, ride instead and then like i had a short short slit slin short sore shin i had a sore shin yeah some of the words don't come out i heard too many pingers today too much sprite powder some of the words don't come out too clear right now at my age alzheimer's is kicking in but seriously you want to have any pain you don't want to run you do not want to run. You want to go on the bike instead. And that's one of my biggest secrets. I did a 247 marathon, 248 marathon, 247 marathons on Strava, 10 miles a week, 10 miles a week, sub 248, 10 miles a week, unheard of, PR. That's a PR for me. So you want to use the bike. If you're sore, do not run. Please do not run. Just go and ride. Replicate the workout you're going to do running on your bike and don't do it if you've got any pain. So if you're going to do 1K repeats and you've got sore Achilles, go do it on the bike. Do your three or four minute intensity at that heart rate or power or power output or whatever you're gonna do or perceived effort. Do that, just replicate it. Go and do a 10K run in 40 minutes. Go and do a ride for 40 minutes. Go and ride your bike for 40 minutes. Simple as that. At the same sort of intensity you'd run it. 
and you get the, you get you get better results. You get better results, and that's people. I'm mean, I'm running sub 17 5 Ks age 40. It's pretty much unheard of, unless you're a pretty fucking good runner when you were junior, and I wasn't. I was the slowest kid in school. The only reason I did cross country at school is because no team would pick me for basketball. Cross country was the only fucking sport I could do because no one wanted to be on their team. <laughs> and people, and then one of the teachers was like, "Hey Harley, you should uh, you should do the school cross country." And I'm like, "Yeah, I can do that." And I would finish last at the inter school meets. I'd finish dead last. Maybe me and a fat kid, you know. And I would finish okay. It's in in my school. I'd probably finish like top ten. That's because there was only like fifteen runners, you know. <laughs> so it was like I got into running because that was all I could do because no one else wanted to do it. But it wasn't because I was gifted, man. So people say I'm a gifted person. No, no, no. The, the nutrition's a gift. The footwear's a gift. These running tips are a gift. And you've just gotten the best running tips ever. High carb, low fat, vegan lifestyle. Max cushion shoes from Outra and posture. Try and run relaxed shoulders. Have your chin back. Run tall. Run tall. And imagine a, a string coming from your chest and you, the center of your chest, your solar plexus between your nipples. A big string coming out of there. And just, it's just pulling you along on the road just imagine that just pulling you along shoulders back chin in run tall run like a robot relax shoulders relax hands like you got two butterflies in there and keep that body avoid boxing you don't want to be having you know your shoulders you know left right left right you just want to be like running like a robot you know watch some of the kenyans watch some of the kenyans running um you know on on, on the youtube there. you can even see my form is pretty good and tash is pretty good there as well if you have any critiques hey i'm always open to learning better things when it comes to form I know my nutrition is un, un, uh, unknockable, but form, I'm always learning, looking for uh, more tips on form because I am a, a pretty relatively uh, new runner in terms of running faster there. So there you go. That's, uh, that's the best tips you're going to get. Nutrition, high-carb vegan, you know, fuels the blood cells. Red blood cells, that's what it's all about. EPO, all these blood doping stuff, it's red blood cells. And what does red blood cells live on? Glucose. So 10 grams of carbs per kilo of body weight per day, it can go up or down from there. One gram of carbs per kilo body weight per hour when you're out there and you'll avoid the bonk and you'll recover really good and drink enough water so you piss and clear every two to three hours and for a morning run I just wake up have a couple of cups of water a piece of fruit go out come back within 20 minutes and then have my rest of my water and my lunch you got any questions get a copy of my ebook it's in links below we'll see you on the road if you have any more running questions hit us in the comment section down below thanks for watching